right. Welcome to the Crestville Planning Commission meeting. Uh, today's April 16th of 2020. It's 4.05. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, it looks like uh, we are all doing this by phone and video conference. So, welcome everyone. It's great to have you. This is really odd. And I hope to never do this again. <laughs> but I'm glad we could come up with something. So, um, our planning commissioners that are joining us for this meeting are uh, Jessica Landstra, Chair, Susan Bennett, Vice Chair, David Christopher, Ed Gunderson, and Tammy Sushak. So, thank you guys for uh, participating, and whoever's live out there, thanks for also tuning in. Um, all right, so first off, we need to uh, look at our minutes uh, from February 20th of 2020. Um, has everyone had a chance to read those? I'm guessing. Yes. All right, so next we need to review, let's see, we need to approve those. Um, do we have I'll a motion to? I'll motion to approve the minutes from February's meeting. I'll second it. All right, um, all those in favor then? Aye. 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 I, okay, I heard I heard eyes from Tammy, Susan, Ed, and David. Is that correct? I have yes. an eye as well. And Jessica, yes, of course. Yeah, thank you. Yep. That should be all right. So those have been approved um, unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Um, all right. So, Maddie, would you like us to go to commissioner comments now? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, any commissioners that have any comments, go ahead and let her rip. Um, I don't know if this is our purview, but I, I did send a picture of those curves at the Dollar General, which I think are trip hazards. Yes, thank you, Ed, for providing those. So what, what happens with that type of thing? Well, um, we'd start by um, we'd start by providing them to public works and having them go out and evaluate whether they can be either mitigated through uh, reducing their size or I, my hunch is that they're designed to provide stormwater runoff. And um, the next step would be to determine whether or not they can be painted to at least provide visual caution. Um, and then I would probably uh, work with Public Works to determine who ought to reduce them, either in height or provide the paint. So should I send the photos to Public Works then? Um, no, I'm happy to do it, and I apologize if I, I hadn't done it yet and it kind of got lost in the shuffle, but I'm happy to follow up on that for you. Thank you. All right. Do we have anything else? Okay. Moving on to new business, um, it looks like we're going to be getting a presentation on system development charge updates. Uh, Steve Donovan, Donovan, excuse me, from Donovan Enterprises will present to the Planning Commission preliminary results of an update to the city system development charges. Okay, thank you. On your screen, this is Steve Donovan. You see a, a PowerPoint header slide. Uh, Maddie's going to click the pages for me and I'm going to walk through this. I just wanted to point out that there's also a uh, draft final report. I think Jim's probably got it up on the city's website by now. Is that correct, Jim? Jim, you there? Guess not. Can you hear me, Emmy? Emmy Sue? Sorry, Steve, yes. I'm here. Okay, Jim. Uh, did you get 
the draft final report up on the website? We did, and Maddie Phillips helped uh, develop a web page for it, and it is on our website. Great. Okay. Maddie, if we can uh, start start the presentation then, I can start walking through this. You bet. Okay, so today's agenda. You can go ahead and click. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a click and point thing, Maddie. Uh, first, we're going to have a couple of slides here to talk about what STCs are, and more importantly, what STCs are not. And uh, there is a schedule that's involved with the SDC update. Part of it is 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 driven by the statute that governs SDCs, and uh, some of it is driven by your council's schedule. Uh, we're going to talk about capital improvement plans and why they're important. And then finally, uh, uh, talk about the current SDC methodology and fees. Go ahead, Maddie. Click again. And we're going to compare your current SDCs to your neighboring. I think this is something that everybody likes to take a look at to see where are you relative to everyone else in your neighborhood. And then finally, uh, we'll come back with questions and comments. Next slide, please, Betty. There we go. SDCs, just by definition, I'm, I, I suspect you all know this, but this is for the, uh, the audience. SDCs are one-time fees on new development that they're paid at the time of development. And they're only intended by statute to recover a fair share of the cost of existing and planned facilities. Uh, ORS 223.299 separates the SDCs and defines them into two unique components. First, a reimbursement fee, which is designed to recover costs associated with capital improvements already constructed and has capacity existing to serve new growth. And then finally, an improvement fee. Patty? Thank you. Uh, an improvement fee is designed to recover the costs associated with future or planned capital improvements. And generally speaking, in an SDC, most of the time, it's the improvement fee that's the larger portion of the fee of the total SDC. SDCs are not charged to ratepayers or taxpayers. And we find a lot of times that uh, commissioners and elected officials sometimes get that confused. SDCs uh, are confused with, with user fees like rates, monthly uh, uh, water and sewer rates. Your existing customers are not charged SDCs. Now this is something that the next one that I want to talk about here that I know you've had some conversations on this, uh, SDCs do have an impact on infrastructure development and the composition of your future tax base. And this sub-bullet here is really something I know you've talked about. SDC methodology may incentivize certain types of development or it could discourage other types of development depending on how you create that SDC. And then uh, in the case of your city, most, almost all cities, the SDCs must be calculated based on your ordinance number 417, section five. That's the enabling legislation within the city that frankly mirrors the state statute on SDCs. And this is the kind of the, where the rubber meets the road the SDC law establishes the maximum SDC you can charge, but it does not say you must charge that maximum. You, can, you don't have to charge an SDC at all if you don't want to. And this is where this striking of the balance has to be taken by the elected officials between growth pays for growth versus if you set your SDCs too high, you might discourage growth from happening in your community. Go ahead, Maddie. Now what we've got here is, is a timeline, the statutory timeline. The reason we have this timeline is we're proposing to change the methodology for one of your uh, SDCs and that is for stormwater because you don't have one right now. If we were not changing any of the methodologies no timeline of disclosure would really apply. It only has to do when you're actually enacting or changing a methodology. And just for 
uh, the, uh, the statutory requirement says the city has to have a list of interested people concerning SDCs and 90 days prior to any legislative action on the change, uh, we have to notice the people on that list. In our case, we didn't have a list. So Jim noticed this in the newspaper as a, as a public announcement. So there's the 90 day clock ticking. The next hurdle is 60 days prior to uh, that legislative action. The methodology has to be available for review. And Jim has done that and has it on the city's website at this time. Now we're going through our, our mandatory, well not mandatory, but our, our uh, outreach and disclosure by meeting with you folks today. We're going to have a public hearing uh, on May 11th tentatively with the city council, not asking for any legislative action, but just to make the presentation effectively what we're making to you today. And then finally on June 8th tentatively, we would ask the council for consideration to act on our recommendations for changes to the SDCs. Go ahead, Maddie. Now, why do capital improvement plans, why do we have to have them when we're making SDCs? Well, the law says we have to. Prior to the establishment of any SDC by ordinance or resolution, we have to have a capital improvement plan, public facilities plan, or master plan, or comparable plan that includes a list of capital improvements. And we've done that. We've uh, sat down with staff and gone through your facilities plans. And that's, I must say, you're in a fortunate position. You've got a whole number of very fresh or recently completed facilities plans for your utilities that really helped us get along. And also your own city ordinance specifies that you got to have capital improvement plan. Go ahead, Manny. You can go through this slide. Quick on the trigger there, Maddie. There you go. Thank you. So your current methodology and fees, uh, this is kind of a good little slide because it tells you not only what you're charging, but it also tells you how long in the tooth your current SDCs are. I mean, for water, the last one was, last review was in 2004. For wastewater, it was 2003. For parks, 2006. And streets, 2006. So it's definitely time for an update of your, your SDC. And as I spoke of earlier, you've got some very fresh uh, facilities plans with new costs and, and new plans out there. For, the, for water, it's the 2018 water master plan. For wastewater, it's the 2017. Uh, parks, 2018. And streets, you've just completed your TSP. I know you folks have been involved with that, that effort. As you can see, stormwater, we got nothing, but we're proposing to implement one uh, as we move downfield here. And as you can see, your current SDCs for a single family home, uh, average single family home is $12,266. And there are the components. Go ahead, Maddie. So here's what you charge now $12,266 on the right for a single family. And the largest component is water, then wastewater, then parks, then streets. Now, if you look on the left, you'll notice that the water slice has, has gotten smaller. We're actually proposing to decrease the water SDC, but pretty significantly increase the wastewater, the streets, and the parks, and implement a new stormwater. And the reason that we need to reduce the water SDC is because you have about $3.8 million in your water SDC fund now that you've already collected that you haven't spent. So that money has to be spent first before we can start increasing the SDC for water. And uh, uh, Jim, that money was because uh, you had raised the SDC and you had collected it on a reservoir project, is that right? 
That's correct, Steve. Okay, okay. So go ahead, Maddie, we can go to the next slide. And here we're gonna loop through the neighboring communities, SDCs. Now for water, as you can see here, uh, you're currently $5,277. We're proposing to reduce that. And uh, we, we're talking about bringing it down closer toward the Springfield level than uh, uh, the uh, where you are right now. We're talking $2,405, so we're right around that level. And that's just the, the mathematics of how we calculate SDCs. Uh, uh, we can't charge people really twice. In other words, bring in all this SDC money, not spend it, and then charge new customers for what we haven't spent. Just simple level of fairness. Go ahead, Matty, the wastewater. Now, in, in this case, uh, you're currently $4,746. We're, we're proposing to move that up to uh, almost $6,800. So we would move that just south of Paloma, but north of Coburg. And uh, I have some SDCs uh, in the state now for wastewater that are approaching $12,000 for a single family home. Wastewater is an extremely expensive endeavor nowadays. Go ahead, Maddie. Now here is stormwater. And in our case, you've got nothing now. We're proposing to increase stormwater to $295. We do not have a stormwater capital improvement plan at this time. You're in the process of implementing a stormwater master plan and within a year or so, a, a plan, a capital improvement plan will come out of that. But what you do have is a, a fair amount of investment in the existing system to uh, for storm drainage, particularly in your uh, your streets, your trunk drainage system. And there is capacity remaining in that that fee. So 100 percent or the preponderance of the fee that we're proposing is going to be for reimbursement fee, not improvement. Go ahead, Maddie. Now, streets, you are currently very, very low, and we are proposing to pick that up to uh, 3750 bucks. So we're talking about bringing that up somewhere around what Eugene and Springfield are, are, are charging right now. And that's based on the, the new transportation system plan, uh, constrained projects capital list. Uh, that was, geez, just recently completed. And parks, we're proposing to effectively double the park speed from 1600 to 3500. So we would be bringing that up toward the Cottage Grove level. And that's predicated on uh, your current parks capital improvement plan Within the, within the parks master plan. So here is what you charge now relative to everybody else. And I think the, the takeaway from this particular slide is your SDCs right now are very, very low relative to just about everybody in, in your neighborhood. Uh, you look at Palomas and Coburg and, and Benita and Eugene, uh, they're, they're, they're well north of you. And uh, uh, it, this really goes back to you not having reviewed your SDCs for God, you know, almost 15 years in some cases. And now we're just playing catch up is what, our, what you can take away from this. Go ahead, Manny. So, uh, questions? This is David. I've got a question about the parks. Is that going to be used for new parks or for existing parks? It will be used for a combination of both. There will be improvements to existing parks, and there is a, uh, a level of a ability to spend on new parks. And there are some new parks recommended in your parks master plan. Manny, which of the high priority parks do you recall? 
Um, Steve, I think, unfortunately, I probably don't have the best information, but uh, my recollection is that there is some work that will likely happen on South 2nd Street with that park property that was purchased last year. Um, we do have a park need out at, uh, on the east side, uh, Garden Lake Park is is functioning, but it may uh, function better if there were some improvements made to it to make it a more active use. Um, so we may see some work happen around a Garden Lake master plan that would suggest including a variety of different active uses at that park, which may require some grading and excavating and activities like that. Uh, and then there may be some need for parks up in the northeast or northwest corner of the community, if I recall correctly, um, as we look at growth boundary opportunities and the cert level of service received by folks that live further north um, in the city, that there may be opportunities to uh, provide park services a little closer to those folks. David, you do bring up a good question, though, with respect to any SDC. The SDCs can, the improvement fees can only be paid for capacity expanding type projects. So any of the park projects that would be SDC eligible would have to expand capacity. It could not be used to fix existing deficiencies. Um, and that's just the definition of an SDC. My concern is if we get so many parks out there, are we going to be able to maintain them or are they just going to become overgrown grass with a lot of weeds? This is the eternal trouble, isn't it? With any infrastructure, part, well, parks in particular, you're right. Uh, you can't use SDCs to pay for the operations and maintenance of facilities. And so you're going to have to find uh, another source. And what many communities across the state are using, they're either using park fees or your user fees for the parks or I've seen some, there's a park fee on your utility bills now, in addition to a public safety fee on your utility bill. So that's that's a struggle that uh, you and the elected officials really have to think about. It's a great question because it is a big problem. You build these facilities and then you can't maintain them. So I have a question. When you talked about the, the, the wastewater um, charges, you mentioned there'd be a, a reimbursement fee that the purchase funds would be used for. I don't understand what that means. Sure, I can take it back. We, in, in the way the statute allows you to construct SDCs, you, you get to look at two components of the SDC. Think of it as, as book filleting of a fish. One side is the reimbursement fee, and that's a fee that new users would pay to connect to existing infrastructure that has capacity remaining in it to serve. So in other words, the existing ratepayers built pipes and pumps and things that were bigger than they needed at the time of construction so that they could host more users to the system. The new users then reimburse existing ratepayers for the capacity that they already paid for built infrastructure. Does that make sense to you, Edward? Yeah, it does. Thank you. If there aren't any additional questions or perhaps just to um, share a bit of staff perspective as you think through some of the responses that Steve has provided, um, what we realize, and, and Jim, Please correct me if I if I misstep on this, but as a generalization, what we realized as staff when we started working on the city's capital improvement plan is that um, our our street fund is significantly deficient, and our water and sewer funds uh, were at least our water fund was fairly healthy, as Steve mentioned. And as a small city, and in, in our discussions about capital projects, we've often revisited this concept of trying to triangulate um, our, our uh, reserves in terms of providing a project that can address all three of the capital improvements that might happen in a project, starting with the water and sewer infrastructure below the street, and then 
completing the street or, or upgrading the street to city standard in the same swoop. Um, and what we realize is that we sometimes have money in water, but not in streets, for example, to do a project. And a big component of our cost has to do with mobilization of those projects. So we're finding that as we might have water, uh, water reserves to work on a water line, for example, um, we often come up with a bit short on having funding available to do the, the replacement of that facility, like a street uh, reconstruction. So part of this discussion about SDCs focuses on how can we uh, how can we rebalance some of our, our reserves so that we're collecting on projects in a way that allows us to get all three of those infrastructure improvements done at the same time? And I know that's not part of Steve's work necessarily, um, but it's something that we've talked about at a functional level, how, how to mobilize and utilize some of the funds that we've been collecting. Does anyone have any questions about that or um, any concerns that you might um, have for Steve? I'm looking at the uh, Facebook stream and I it's funny to see myself and the little uh, smiley head scratching question mark guy <laughs> on it. <laughs> but we haven't seen any um, any comments there. There are four people watching. Um, I guess I have a quick question. Um, as far as when all of this is, I mean, as far as what this shows is that we're going to try and push this through um, by June 8th, does that mean that this come, you know, if we decide to adopt it, um, does that mean that at that time is when it becomes effective? What we would propose to do, this is Steve again, is um, we would propose to have the council adopt on January, on June 8th for implementation July 1 with your new fiscal year. Okay. Thank you. Good question, Jessica. Thanks. And just as another aside, last time uh, the city, well, I guess the city adopted um, SDCs in 2004, between 2004 and 2009. Um, and at times we've put out a notice that the city will um, be adopting new fees and done the same kind of, uh, the same kind of advertisement that, that Jim does, or Jim did for this project. And what we find is that sometimes we get a little spike in development. Okay. And folks realize that the prices are changing um, and are a bit more motivated to get their projects through or at least permitted and pay their SECs prior to, uh, prior to the change. Right, that's kind of what I was uh, referring to a little bit here was just kind of you know, how quickly people are going to be, you know, to give them, I guess, that time a little bit to be able, if they're, if they're already working on a project, but, you know, haven't quite gotten the permitting done, um, how much warning they have before everything jumps, so. Sorry, Jessica. Understandable. Sorry for jumping in. This is Jim Piper. Um, we haven't adopted updated these SEC fees since uh, 2006 for many of them, as Steve had pointed out. And uh, one of the things we, we looked into was making sure there was the inflation factor included in that. Um, and that we, going forward, start looking at these every five years. Um, Steve, can you elaborate on that? Sure, sure. Uh, the, the statute allows you to uh, adjust your SDCs every year for inflation as long as you tell everybody what you're using 
for inflation. And uh, I, I think that the statute says a, uh, a, a uh, replicable and, and known index. And we're in our report, we're recommending that you use the engineering news records construction cost index. It's an industry wide uh, accepted and been published forever. And that index is really geared toward construction versus using the, constru uh, the consumer price index, which is used obviously for consumption for bread and milk and meat. And uh, your, your costs for infrastructure development vary more with basic construction than they do with consumer price. So we recommend that you're gonna adjust that every year based on that index. And then every five years, you come back in and you recalibrate your SDCs. Because like we found this time, your water SDC at $5,500 or $5,700 should actually be lower. I think this is just, just good government and good business to go back and review your, your methodologies every five years. So that's our recommendation to you. Um, do you think that every, you know, I think every five years that, you know, that sounds pretty good. I, I think my biggest concern um, is just, you know, obviously we they waited a little too long on doing this. And so the jump is, is pretty, you know, large. And so I think, you know, moving forward, making sure that there's something in place, you know, that says a process for this that says, you know, this is what it needs to get done so that we're not, you know, having the jump be so large. Cause I think that, you know, is difficult to swallow sometimes. I agree. Well, really agreed, but there's also, uh, uh, you wanna have, you kind of ma matching with your facilities plans because the garbage that goes in is only as good as the garbage that goes out. and if you're doing this every year and you're not really changing your capital improvement plans, it's really not gonna have a whole lot of change on your, your SDC calculation. So really what we, why I say that five years, it generally matches how you do your facilities planning, your, your, your master plans. And that's sort of that, so we link the facilities plan development with the SDC updates. And in between, makes, you've got inflation adjustment. Right. If I can add, um, I was on the team that hired Steve, and we went through quite the process to determine which firm we would use and um, check them from a good group of people. One of the reasons we chose Steve is his willingness to work with Cliff and, and really put um, some thought into what projects coming up are we definitely going to move forward with? And what are just on the city's wish list and maybe don't need to affect the SDC fee increase at this time? So I appreciate Steve spending the bulk of his time with the staff and getting real figures, not just pulled out of the air to kind of match Cottage Grove or Philoma or Springfield, but he used real data that was uh, super important. Don't, don't you think if we would have every year done an adjustment for inflation uh, in these years since 2005 or six, we would probably be at about the same spot just readjusting our allocations? Uh, yeah, you're probably not far off. Uh, yeah. and. Uh, uh, it, it really is important that to, to recognize as a government that your costs are growing every year and that you have to keep your fees in line with your costs. Yeah, I agree with you. You're right. So going forward, we need to be sure and adjust for inflation every year and then every five years do a reallocation of those funds. Right. And it's also effective full employment for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, I think I definitely would like to add in with my comments that I don't disagree with the numbers at all. Um, I just, 
you know, I think I agree with David that actually, you know, moving forward, making sure that we're staying on top of this would make it a little bit less painful um, because I, you know, I inflation, you know, plans are always going to be changing and the product uh, projects will be changing. And so keeping these up to date with those, I think, is absolutely important. And uh, I think the plan moving forward to change them with inflation every year and then also update, you know, every five years to make sure that we're on track uh, makes absolute sense. And so I just, I would add the comment to just definitely push that that gets completed so that we're not sitting here in 15 years wondering what happened and why we're not, you know, why everything's out of whack and not in line like it should be. Jessica, I appreciate your comment very much. Um, as as you all, my commissioners who have been on the commission a while, and even those who have been on the commission for a short time, you've heard me speak at meetings, um, particularly in the presentation of some of our infrastructure plans about uh, the timeliness or lack of timeliness that we've encountered in the in the development of our infrastructure planning and cap particularly around capital improvement planning. Um, and I suppose specifically this came up during the transportation system plan discussions um, that there was a period of time when the city of Crestwell did it were very apropos in this case where um, we have in the last three years made a concerted effort to really um, get, get through that infrastructure planning backlog and make sure that our plans are up to date. And I think Jim and I and, and Cliff and Michelle all sit down each month and we talk about what projects and how to prioritize and how we're going to move certain projects forward in, in their operational order. And we're often at, at a bit of a challenge because of the financial side of those discussions. So we look forward to helping our, our future selves or those who succeed us at the city in maintaining a regular update of all of these infrastructure plans so that we can keep up with what we see to be the growth of Crestwell and the growth of Crestwell's infrastructure needs. Absolutely, Maddie, I think that's super important. And, you know, moving forward, I think, you know, exactly what you're saying is that we've been playing catch up on everything you know, for quite a while now, I know you have felt that a lot. And so I think, you know, as long as we're making a good plan moving forward, um, as you know, to keep these updated, I, I'm, you know, I have no issue with that. I just wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, I put my piece in there. So, uh, Jessica, Tim Piper here again. I also realize that, that builders consider SDCs when they decide what area or what cities they want to build in, they'll they'll go for the cities with the lower SDC sometimes. That's true, David. Um, and what we're finding and what's interesting is that we're often, um, I think, there are two factors. One is uh, location relative to the metro area often because the developers that we see that come in the door at City Hall interested in developing, um, they have specific regional constraints. In other words, they either are located in the metro area or they're located south of the metro area. And so we see comparisons pretty within a small regional area. So between us, Lowell, Cottage Grove, and maybe even Vanita. Um, although Vanita has some unique factors, and, and it, a lot of it is, you know, how close can we get in the commuting pattern um, for folks to be able to access the metro area for work. Um, so what we might see, and I think maybe Steve, you, you've heard uh, the, the rumblings more so than me, but I, I've heard recently that Cottage Grove will be pursuing an update to their system development charges, and there are some other communities that have recently updated theirs, um, so that we're all kind of moving ahead in that those, those five-year update patterns together. Yeah, that's right. This is Steve again, and uh, uh, 
communities are, particularly the bigger communities, are, are, are constantly uh, uh, in, in the process of indexing their SCs. Uh, Eugene does the indexing uh, for inflation every year, uh, sort of Springfield. And uh, uh, every time a new facilities plan is, is finished, it's almost axiomatic that they they loop into the, that either that particular uh, utilities SDCs or uh, uh, the, the whole group, but it's 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 almost common. So to my point, we're going to find that um, that Cottage Grove's SDCs, even if we uh, update say six months ahead of theirs, we're going to find that our SDCs are are going to fall again slightly below Cottage Grove's when they do their update. And so it'll, the comparison will be very, you know, there will be a lot, a lot of moving pieces, so the comparison might become a little less um, substantial, is what I'm getting at. I have one question looking at the slide of the proposed SDC piece. Um, something I hear about from the public is when you look at those comparisons side by side, the current SDC, the, the pie, and then the uh, proportion that's in the new one, uh, folks may ask, well, if water has so much in reserves, why can't we borrow some of that to do the street project that we're underfunded on? Uh, Steve, can yeah, you speak well, to that? You bet I can. It's this pesky thing called the law. The law says you can't take water SDCs to build streets. You can't take sewer to build parks. An SDC collected for a service can only be paid on the service from which it's collected. It seems kind of straightforward, doesn't it? Well, it's in the law. Thank you, Steve. Can, can that excess water money be used to update old water pipes? If the cost of those pipes to update is for expressly increasing capacity. And this is a this is a good point that part of our study that we spent a whole lot of time on with Cliff is he had some projects, and this is a great question by the way, uh, to replace four inch water pipes that are in the ground with eight inch pipes. So that part of the, the purpose of the replacement was they're old pipes and they're not working right. So they either 50, 60 year old pipes. So part of the cost was for replacement and part of the cost was for expanding capacity. Only the ex capacity expanding component of that project cost is SDC eligible. The replacement cost has to come from water rates. So, and we spent a lot of time on all of these utilities looking at just that question by project. What was for replacement? What was for expansion and capacity increasing? Thank you. Do we have any more questions for Steve? No. <laughs> Guessing that's a no. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you very much. And if, if, if the commissioners are okay, I'll be signing off right now then. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks thank very you. Much, Steve. Thank you, Steve. All right. So now for moving on um i believe do you have anything else we need to um do on the system development charge slides or can we move on no nope, sure that was the that was the presentation and uh, okay. your your role was simply to uh ask questions as a body who reviews and works intimately with developers you would be considered interested parties uh, and also the folks to, to help get the word out um, that folks can, can who you normally work with or talk with in the development community just to make them aware um, and have full information so that if they ask you questions that you might have some background knowledge. So many questions 
did he, for full disclosure, weren't, didn't the word go out like February 11th that this was going to happen? Yes, I believe Jim, Jim noticed that in the paper. Um, and we put uh, some material right on, if you go on the, the front page of the Crestville website, you'll see that there's a little bit about how we're dealing with coronavirus. And then the next item is the, are these two little pie charts um, that you see on your screen. So our hope was that that would begin a conversation and help developers understand that our fees are changing. And I think the next step for staff will be to send out individual emails or at least some stakeholder emails identifying another opportunity that folks can come and comment on the SDC fee prior to the city council's decision. Okay, good, good. All right, do we have any other comments on that or were you guys ready to move on? All right, um, so staff development summary, uh, Maddie? Well, team, uh, we have certainly changed the way that planning applications come into the city. And uh, without the opportunity to see folks person to person, we've been, I've been on the phone quite a bit. Um, I think the primary uh, things that are wrapping up right now or that we're going to see a final plat approval and some signatures on the development Big Leaf subdivision, the extension of Pelgus Avenue off of 5th Street. Um, Tammy, you might have seen some of that construction happening just behind your house or down the way. Um, and that project, you'll remember you approved, I believe, last March um, for five lots along that extension of Pilgus and the folks who owned the house just in front of that extension um, at 628 North 5th Street, they came in for a variance for their reorientation of the house. Um, they are also partitioning off two additional lots. So you'll see that total development results in six unit, uh, let's see, seven lots total. Um, we're sad. The, the staff is uh, saddened to hear that Mr. Taylor, Cal Taylor, has passed away. Um, and his property had previously been um, something called shadow platted. So part of our development requirements say that if a lot is over a certain size, that the applicant show uh, how the, the additional land within a subdivision or a next phase might be partitioned or subdivided. And his property will likely um, come before you in the next few months for your consideration for a preliminary plat of a subdivision. I think their preliminary look provided 12 lots um, off an extension of Crestwood Drive um, called Owens Way. Um, and it's sort of right where the northern part of Crestwood Drive ends. Uh, there will be a, a right turn that will connect through to 5th Street. And so that's uh, a, a, a right away that was included in the um, transportation system plan and something that I imagine uh, there will we'll likely see the same development group that builds a lot in Cresswell uh, pursue over the next few months. Otherwise, um, I've, I've had a few discussions with Mr. Spencer and Mr. Marple about their project on South 10th Street, Butte Road, um, the house that was recently annexed into the city. And that will likely have uh, at least another unit and a restoration of that house, if not more development. And um, we've had a couple interested parties, but given this uh, the big shock of closing City Hall and some of the concerns that people have around um, construction confidence, I think there's been a bit of a pause on some of the larger, more ambitious projects, uh, particularly one that was slated for the southern uh, half of that Hilgas extension that um, someone had approached the city inquiring about multifamily housing there and we haven't heard much since. Um, otherwise, we're
we're still trying to find a, a, an owner, an interested party to buy the Super 8 motel. Uh, we've had at least one party come forward and ask about converting it to multifamily housing. Um, their concern or hang up was uh, related to having to provide commercial uses on the ground floor. So we're still kind of working through that and kind of wondering where the where that property will land. All right. Does anyone have any questions or comments on that? Okay. All right. Is there anything else that you have for us, Maddie? That's it. Just a huge thank you to everyone who persevered through technological challenges to join us today. Um, I know it's not the preferred method and we'd all like to see each other in person, but, uh, you know, I guess there's, there's sort of a double-edged sword where um, we want to all stay home and be safe, but sometimes life has to go on. And so kudos to everyone for persevering through whatever challenges you encountered today. And um, let's hope that each with each time that we do this or have to do this, that it gets a little smoother. All right. Um, it looks like our next meeting is uh, scheduled for Thursday, May 21st of 2020. Does that sound pretty good for everybody's home life? <laughs> So are we going to just put it on the calendar for noon that day? Good question. Does that work for others? I, we're, we're pretty flexible. I think Jim, Jim and Michelle, uh, as my stand-in production team, um, had asked us to do the, asked if we could do the meeting either right at five o'clock so that folks didn't have to stay too late to keep the Facebook Live running or um, have it earlier in the day. So I, I guess I'm open if you um, commissioners would like to explore another time, perhaps you know mid or late afternoon or towards the end of the workday, that would make it easier for folks who are um, held up like Patrick and, and Seth and even Jessica. Um, please feel free to suggest. Um, did you have any time? Uh, I would I would probably get uh, Seth and Patrick's um, thoughts on that. Yeah. If we can do that. I think maybe we leave it at noon for right now. Um, but let's get their input because I think with them being the ones that aren't here, they obviously aren't quite as flexible and so maybe we can have, you know, maybe they can uh, kind of help us come up with a different time that may work better or um, we just do it at noon and, you know, they can't participate or, you know, for now or whatever. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? Yeah, good. I don't know what time Patrick works until. Does anyone else know? I know that Blue Valley Bistro closes at 3, and so Seth would probably be available after 3. But I don't know about Patrick's schedule. Yeah, I would say, Maddie, if you could maybe get a hold of them and we could get stuff figured out that way. I'd be happy. And I guess one last thing, Chair, before uh, we close up shop for today. Um, I want to make sure that everyone remembers or got an invitation to file their statement of economic interests. Um, if you didn't, I'll send out the email again. For whatever reason, Roberta uh, seemed to think that everyone got an email, but I didn't see you all in March and I didn't hear any questions and usually I get like at least three or four. So um, let me send out that uh, that information and inquire as to whether or not you all received that to make sure that you get filed and that there's no financial consequence. Oh, yeah. That email. <laughs> you can, yeah. Can you send it to my email? Yeah, I'll send it out just like I have to do um, to the email and then uh, BCC to you all just so that you can know that it's there. Well, the person that always has problems with it, I got it done, so. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought I was that person. 
I'm glad to know I'm not alone. Not alone. Oh. I'm just a very well, good procrastinator. I can't get into my city email. Can we just come up with a step up by T if for some reason you're not getting your emails or can't access it? Um, and they can help troubleshoot that. Okay. Thank you. On that city yeah. email, <laughs> they, they, uh, they invalidate your password after a certain amount of time. So you have to periodically request a new password and a password reset. Sometimes you can do it through the Microsoft Exchange, and then sometimes you have to call that, that IT company to get it done. Okay, that's probably what happened then. So, Jim, expect a few uh, new work tickets um, coming through. <laughs> Not a problem, Maddie. No problem at all. Very good. I'm just curious why under our names it has different cities. Like I'm Cottage Grove, um, Tammy Sue is Jeannie Washington, <laughs> that's, that's Rose that's Rose Rose. Rose. I'm just curious. The routing for your internet provider. Oh, yes, correct. thank you, Ed. You may be able to change that. Tammy, were you able to change that? No, I tried to put into my profile and try to link it to my LinkedIn and then I went into my computer settings. Um, yeah, Ed is right. <laughs> For anyone who's on the phone, I just I'm my really head, impressed I my head and my head exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. All right. Well, if you guys are all um, good, I'm going to go ahead and then adjourn our meeting at 1.03 p.m. Thank you, everybody, for Thank participating you. today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.